um yeah so we can get started it's already uh, 8:30 here and i believe it's 12 there and uh, starting next month uh, there will be a difference of 4 and 1/2 hours so once it's 8:30 here it will be 1 pm here got it yeah so it's starting from uh, this uh, november 1st or how is it uh i think you can google the let me check that quickly daylight saving in germany uh, it starts on 20 uh, 30th of october which is sunday oh okay okay got it yeah it's not actually the starting but the ending so it's and it ends on 30th of october oh yeah <laughs> okay yeah oh uh yeah we can get started so do you have questions to ask yeah no actually i posted one question uh in that link which you have shared right yes so you are saying that what is the difference between co-living and private one room accommodation in a sharing flat apartment yeah yeah so the private one room accommodation is basically that you for example there is an apartment with three rooms in it right mm-hmm. then you mm-hmm. are basically getting one of those rooms for your own personal okay. use okay but in okay. something like a co-living or a shared accommodation you are sharing the same room with maybe two people you know okay okay because I, when i, mean, I came uh, to germany for the first time i i came alone and i was sharing the same room with another uh, friend of mine but we had two beds okay. in the same room got it got it yeah because uh, like i have seen few of the advertisement in that portals right Mm-hmm. Uh, housing portals so they mentioned like one private room mm-hmm. and uh, they said like uh, uh, kitchen and bathroom would be shared exactly and hall basically yeah so we will be having one room uh, private room for us yeah. but whereas in co living what they are saying is it's like a studio exactly but uh, they'll have uh, four or five it's like a four or five bedroom yeah and uh, there will be one studio where everything would be there like yeah. uh, the bed and kitchen yeah. and everything and i think there will be sure. a very a good price difference between these two types right yeah. so the coal yeah, yeah, is much uh, i think cheaper yeah correct i mean i'm seeing like some 1100 1200 euros per month for coal living and shared it's also between the same range like from 800 to 1200 based on the locality i is the reverse you mean you you get a private room at a cheaper cost correct okay that that's interesting Yeah, that's what I was just bit confused and tried, you uh, know, trying to you know get more clarity on that front. Yeah, maybe it's also depending on the location, right? So maybe the co-living is more in the city center, and the private room apartment is maybe outside of the city. So that also depends. Got it. Got it. So yeah, oh, but cool. uh, I think eleven uh, hundred is expensive. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, we are yeah, uh, I mean... paying twelve hundred, and it's a three-room apartment. I mean, the whole apartment, right? <laughs> Oh okay and is it near to the city center or how Yeah yeah it? it is in the city center Okay but but it's a long term contract right but I'm yeah, looking yeah. for the short term contract because Ah okay got it Yeah, yeah. short terms yeah. are uh, usually expensive uh, and they are also furnished right fully furnished I believe Yeah fully furnished correct Yeah So initially I'm looking for 3 to 6 months for a short term accommodation and then look for the long term Mhm okay Yeah but uh, are you planning to come to Berlin or which city uh, Yeah no I'm planning to come to Berlin on uh, November 28th uh, job seeker visa right Uh no no it's a blue card visa only Ah okay so an employer okay so you already found a job yeah 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 Perfect um so Supriya do you have questions otherwise we have one topic that I can discuss here Yes actually I have one question. Yeah. Uh so I have got my job seeker visa one month back and uh, now I have got one offer from France. Uh-huh. So I am not sure how to proceed for visa do I have to cancel the job seeker visa and apply for French visa or how how it is do you have any idea? I mean if you are if you got a job uh, sorry employment contract already uh, then uh-huh. I mean there is no point of going on a job seeker visa right if you have made your mind that you want to go to France mm-hmm. Okay then, then definitely cancel the job seeker visa right so I don't see a problem there 
okay and uh, if i come to germany on job seeker visa and i'm getting job in any other country so is it uh, possible to uh, apply for visa from germany itself or do i have to come back to india and apply from here a visa for which country do you mean uh, for germany or uh, uk uk sweden or any other i mean it's uh, something that i'm not sure about but um, uk is now part not part of eu right so you might face uh -huh. some difficulties uh, in getting that because first of all you okay. are not a uh, german and you are coming on a job seeker visa from india and then you want to apply for a visa for uk so it might be there okay. might be some friction and apart from uk other countries like france Sweden, yeah other eu or... countries i don't see a problem because uh, you will be able to do that i believe but again on job seeker visa right so if you are on job seeker visa it's i think uh, solely for germany so okay. jsv something that is not for europe but for germany i believe but yeah okay. you, you can clarify these kind of questions with pradyum na he is one of our experts on job seeker visa Um, okay okay you, you can chat with him and he will guide you on that okay sure and uh, one last thing uh, on job seeker visa will i be able to travel around eu countries um again a question for pradeep na it's <laughs> okay okay sure sure no problem yeah. thank you yeah. no worries uh, sorry for uh, not being able to answer those questions because no that's problem. not my no uh, you know expertise yeah, um, yeah, more i understand on the um, employment side the employer yeah. visa Yeah. Um uh, yeah but if you are uh, planning to come on a job seeker visa I also have a uh, some some topic that I wanted to discuss actually but uh, since the audience is less it's fine we can put it on YouTube. So there is this uh, job fair that's happening in Berlin on 10th of November and uh, there are a lot of companies who are joining this job fair and it is free for the applicant side right so if you are a job seeker and you want to uh, apply to jobs it's free for you to join. and this is happening on 10th of november from 2 pm to 7 pm so they reached out to me i also did some research uh, on this company and saw that they are doing it on uh, in multiple locations not not just in berlin but also some other countries and they have very good response rate so it's similar to the job fairs that we have in india but i think the companies are uh, very good here so maybe something uh, that job seekers who are coming here on a job seeker visa they can try out yeah just just wanted okay. to share so uh, what is the procedure to uh, get in to that uh, yeah, fair let, or let me share the link actually it's called tech job fairs uh, okay tech jobs fair so I, i can also share the link here um yeah so it's a tech jobs fair and happening in berlin on 10th of november and it is related to only uh, it related jobs or uh, other jobs as well i think it it technical jobs uh, mostly it okay. Uh, okay are you in not in it uh i am in electronics core ah okay okay yeah. uh yeah i don't know if uh, this is relevant for you but you can go through this website and see yeah sure sure they sure, have some information there okay um i think one of the question was around this so if you are on uh, job seeker visa and in berlin and if you are not able to find a job then yeah these kind of job fairs they usually happen every month or so so i think this is one of the best so maybe uh, the best idea is to go to these job fairs and make contacts and also connect with company representatives it would be a really nice opportunity um okay so any other questions you have so do we need to physically uh, need to be there for applying those uh, i mean to apply uh, to attend the fair job fair or uh, how is it we can apply from remote as well yeah i think uh, last time they had it remotely when it was uh, a lockdown or something but this time it's uh, physical uh, required oh, okay got it got it yeah. if not to share with my friends uh, i mean if it is remote remote uh, apply application is available yeah that uh, sort of sharing because i think last time it was remote uh, but uh, this time they have opened everything right so uh, yeah. yeah thank you but i see a lot of uh, good companies in their list uh, for example zalando and uh, what else 
yeah most of them are startups tiktok as well so yeah good clientele uh parag do you have any question parag can you hear me uh yes hello hey how are you uh, so, uh, i'm doing good uh, how about you yeah i'm good do you have questions uh no actually uh, uh, i have an appointment for job seeker visa on 1st of december and i'm planning to move in the mid of january and okay. my intended stay like uh, i'm focusing on berlin like lots of english speaking jobs over there mm-hmm. and in the past 8 months like i have appeared for almost 16 17 interviews and most of them from berlin so okay yeah yeah definitely berlin has lot of uh, startups emerging every day so it's a good opportunity there um yeah 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 so you said you are coming in january january yes okay yeah i think it's also a good time because uh, most of the people they will be back from their vacations by mid of january so you will have a good 6 uh, months for trying out things yes yes indeed yeah okay good luck good luck with that yeah thank you um any questions you have other than this uh no nope. actually uh, like i am uh, active on community like uh, and uh, based on the people's experience and reviews like uh, i am full proof on my job application like the for the visa appointment and uh, job search as well mm-hmm. so yeah so i'm like uh, waiting for january to come and uh, yeah to start job search in berlin okay perfect Yeah, yeah sounds good uh yeah i was just sharing uh, with the other people who joined uh, that there is a tech job fair happening in november but uh, you will be joining berlin after january right mid of january or so yes yes yeah so yeah but maybe you can try other job fairs happening in berlin other than this one yeah yeah uh, definitely i also attended like in the month of july to virtual uh, mm-hmm. job fairs but uh, like they were expecting me to physically present yeah. for the interviews and uh, that was not possible yeah yeah i know okay uh, anything else uh, supriya parag any one of you uh, one small question related to german language classes so mm-hmm. i'm doing uh, i'm learning a2 in goite online class Okay. So, is there uh, online courses available uh, there in Germany? Yes, yes, in of course. Okay, or any other institute? Or uh, yeah. super intense courses? Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of institutes are now providing online classes, so you can select the one that has good reviews and which works according to your time, right? So, if you want to do evening classes or weekend classes, you have a lot of options. Okay. And also, some But, of the companies they also uh, this uh, how to call it provide they, language. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they they support you in terms of uh, providing the institute help. I mean, helping you with identifying the right institute and those kind of things. Okay. Uh, in India, actually, we have standard format like A one, A two, then B one, B two, C one. Uh, in Germany, I have heard like that's A one, then A two point one, A two point two, and then B two point one. Mm-hmm. so did you go with the standard format or this point wala format yeah yeah i, I did the point format uh, there uh, uh-huh. we had to do a1 i think a1 doesn't have a point thingy yeah a1 uh, is basic yeah yeah after that it started with a2.1 and a2.2 and then b1.1 uh-huh. and things like that um, i think it it also depends on the institute uh, yeah some of them they just uh, combine these points together and make it as uh, one single entity um but other okay. than the point system okay you uh, you have learned from goite no no it's uh, another institute called in lingua it's also famous uh, okay in lingua yes i know yeah yeah uh, i was doing it offline mostly uh, but then corona happened and i had to go mm-hmm. online and when i when it went online i did only i think uh, for three months or so because it was not that effective i felt and also it was very difficult right after office hours so and especially when you are in berlin you don't feel the need to do that so there is no motivation as well 
yeah but it's always good to have at least till a2 i would say so a1 is of course necessary but if you do till a2 then you can also manage your day to day activities and speaking with people here so it's recommended yeah. to do till a2 at least actually i have uh, started getting uh, interview calls because of uh, because i have updated a2 in my cv i call it up yeah so i know yeah yeah and, and most also of the employers are saying that uh, my traveling date is uh, mid january so most of the employers are saying uh, call us when you are in germany we will arrange a uh, interview call mm-hmm. interview for you when you are here mm-hmm. so yeah we'll see yeah yeah of course uh, if you are in germany then a lot of opportunities for you basically if you are working from india then it's a kind of a red flag for them because they don't want to usually interview people who are not in germany already i mean it's very rare so maybe 5% uh, of the employers are willing to do that so okay. yeah and uh, with respect to lifestyle and the uh, 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 cost of living uh, france and germany which one is more preferable i i know a lot of people who were working in france and i mean paris especially and they moved from paris to uh, berlin and they like it okay. in berlin more uh, as compared to it was in paris uh, and they they don't want to go back basically so i don't know maybe i just met a, a portion of people and there might be other uh-huh. portion of people who wants to go back uh, but yeah yeah paris is comparatively costly yeah i also think so yeah so i have one question uh, mm-hmm. regarding like uh, mm-hmm. can i directly appear for the a2 exam like i have completed a1 but uh-huh. uh, is there any mandatory thing like i need to appear for a1 then a2 or uh, i can if i am confident on my skills uh, on a2 uh, sorry a1 then i can directly apply for uh, uh, a2 exam Yeah, yeah, you you can skip the exam, so you can also do directly B one if you are confident about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, okay. I know someone who did like that, so he just applied directly for B one. He didn't do A one or A two, so just B one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. And, too, and yeah. he got uh, got that certificate as well. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah. Um. Yeah. what else any any other question ah kuntal we have a new member here kuntal did i pronounce your name correctly i am up good afternoon eh hey, good afternoon any any questions you have ah uh, no no but, you know actually i was there and uh, i was there a couple of seasons back uh, and uh, you have actually clarified a lot of questions from from my side uh, you know it was uh, it was related to uh, related to job prospects for uh, for cloud computing architects or cloud architects and all that mm-hmm. so you 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 did clarify all the doubts uh, but uh, you know uh, I, i asked this question uh, in that in that uh, session as well that uh, you know uh, the the friend of mine who was asking the previous question to you for a1 a2 uh, this is like coming up uh, like a you know uh, like a regular question in my mind as well that mm-hmm. uh, is it is it possible to get direct job for cloud architects for uh, data architects for data engineers uh, if they are not uh, you know having enough proficiency in uh, in german language mm, i think i mean cloud architects and data architects i don't think they these are customer facing roles right so these are roles which can uh, work internally correct me if i'm wrong aha uh-huh. right yeah so any role which is not customer facing i don't see a need to actually do it but it will always be good if you do the german language course i mean it's right. like so, a developer role right hmm so uh, you know uh, my second question would be uh, adding to this first question only that once we will be there Mm-hmm. and once we'll start working uh, to you know to live a daily life to uh, uh, to be a social uh, you know person you need to uh, learn german that is for sure and you know in in future uh, prospect also uh, you know in terms of pr in terms of residency you need to learn german and you need to uh, you know qualify or pass certain kind of level yeah. i understand that so that is 
something which uh, you know uh, once you get a job and you have to do it so there is no choice but as uh, getting a job if you have a choice then uh, probably it would be much more easier right i mean what i'm saying is that uh, for example you are very technically proficient you have you are a very skillful guy and you know everything uh, you know you know everything in your domain and uh, you apply for a job there are uh, high chances that you will get a job but then that learning german or uh, giving a a1 a2 uh, would uh, you know probably be a little uh, i mean it will probably pull you behind uh, then uh, you know then applying for jobs uh, uh, you know uh, regularly yeah. i mean this is what i think what what do you suggest yeah i mean for me also i i initially i felt that i, I it's very difficult to learn german and then apply jobs and i that's why i didn't do german course before i got a job in germany so my first job yeah. i i got yeah. with just my english proficiency right so they knew mm-hmm. that i don't know german but they said if you are willing then we are ready to sponsor your uh, german language course for one year and they did that they sponsored my german language course for one year and uh, okay. yeah that's how it was and they they were expecting me to learn german uh, but mm-hmm. they didn't require me to have the german knowledge when i applied yeah yeah exactly that is what uh, i am also uh, you know i have also been uh, dangling with this question in my mind from quite some time now yeah yeah i mean you will find lot of companies who uh, need german proficiency but there are on the other side lot of companies who doesn't need the german proficiency so you need to basically filter out those companies right and uh, anup uh, my last question would be this uh, expat hire uh, will this uh, will this help us in in getting a job as well right yes yes that's the plan uh, but uh, we need to first build a community of good profiles good uh, technical people mm-hmm. and then we will approach companies to you know kind of uh, come to our platform because without profiles you cannot convince companies to come to your platform so we okay. need those profiles that interaction happening on the website before we reach out to them okay and uh, this is for all over germany right Yes, yes. This is for the whole Germany. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, I, I, I am yet to make the profile. I think I'll do it today. Yeah. Please, please do that. <laughs> sure. Definitely. Yeah, and we will be adding more features very soon onto this website. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. but it's still in progress. It's a very basic version at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I wish you all the best. And you. Uh, you know, I will, I will do my profile today, and uh, you know, hope to get the job uh, as well. Uh, Uh, you know uh, with yeah, your yeah, help yeah. sure thank you all right okay and that was uh, the only thing which i had and ha- wishing you happy diwali wishing all a very happy diwali uh, you know from my side thank you you too thank you uh was it aditya you you had some question right uh i don't know i, I need to ask you just now actually you said that your, your company sponsored your german language course right Mm-hmm. so was it some kind of a institute or was it some like was it some kind of a what we say class or something like that from where did you get that uh, german language uh, like yeah, it was an institute that... and it was a offline class uh, the uh, institute is called inlingua it's quite famous um yeah inlingua inlingua yeah could you could you write it down in the chat if you don't mind yeah yeah it's called in lingua and in i lingua. think it comes uh, after goethe so if goethe is number 1 i would say in lingua is number 2 probably and uh, yeah they okay. are really good uh, at least the offline classes were really good uh, very interactive very small groups uh, i would say 3 to 4 people in one batch so it's really interesting to learn there and like for example like uh, if if uh, like in my like i said right in my domain there is a requirement of language so if i complete a certain level of language and de- then decide to get the further levels from germany mm-hmm. so you would you suggest that in lingua would be better or would goethe be better or is it even required so like once you start speaking and talking to people and you are able to converse in a proficient manner so is the certificate still required for an expat or then then once people start realizing that okay this person can speak right and Uh, like have that necessary skill, have the level of necessary skill so then w- will will the higher level of certification be required yeah there like are two things a certain level 
Yeah, there are two things. One is uh, the official requirements, right? For example, if you want to apply for a PR, in that case, you need either A1 or B1. So if you have A1, you can apply for a PR after 33 months uh, while being on blue card. And if you have B1, uh, then you can apply within 21 months while on blue card. So I think those are the official requirements. So for these to fulfill, you need those certificate. But to perform your day-to-day -day job, I don't think you need a certificate. It's more about how you how proficient you are uh, with the German knowledge, right? Or with the German language. Um, yeah, so these are the two types of requirements. For the official purpose, you definitely need the certificate. And for the uh, daily communication, you don't really need it. So after B1, how many, in how many months the PR months. can be applied? 22 months. 21 months. 21 months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this particular B1 certification can be done via Goethe also or and in Lingua also or only Goethe will be uh, like, will be preferred? Uh, I think both. So uh, I did my A2 uh, using uh, in Lingua and I applied for the PR with that certificate. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. And okay, the, that was it for the language part. I also wanted to know regarding the ZAP certificate, actually. Okay. So, like the university listed in the ZAP website gives an H, H plus, like currently my the university from where I have completed my master's is given the H1 rating. So will, will I still be required to get the ZAP certificate or will my certificate be... Uh, like recognized over there uh, what do you mean h1 is it h1 or h plus h plus h plus sorry h plus I'm yeah sorry. yeah so all those where h plus is there you don't need any certificate for the education you are okay, okay as long as your certificate is in english at least yes yes it's in english okay, okay cool and yeah. when, uh, then there could be some like Devgiri, like because I'm, I have done my, my thing from Maharashtra, right? So there could be the university name could be in the bilingual language. It can be either in English also as well as with English, it can be in like Marathi also. Mm -hmm. So, but if it is in there, are the information is in English, it's still uh, valid, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, it is valid. And okay. I mean, if you are too concerned about it, you can also get it translated in German with the official translator. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Um, any last question? We have two more minutes. Uh, I have one question. Mm -hmm. uh, the portal that you mentioned, uh, the expat for job search, uh, is, it, uh, it, is it focusing on IT-related jobs or other jobs as well? Uh, so the idea is we uh, do it for everyone. Uh, not just for mm -hmm. IT, but also for non-IT people. So even including people who are in the medical field or medical lines, because there's a lot of demand for people who are in the medical lines in Germany. Uh, I don't know if you guys okay. are aware, because uh, but most of the nurses who are working in Germany, they come from India, from Kerala, basically. Oh. Yeah, so we want to provide a platform for almost everyone, not just the IT people. Okay, good to hear that. And I posted the link uh, on the chat. Yeah, got it. Thank uh, you. Arup, just, uh, yeah, just last question quickly. Mm -hmm. Has any of our members applied for the Chancellor's card, the one that has just, they have announced it? Like anybody who has come for a job, like because I wanted to know what are the limitations in Chancellor's card when compared to Job Seeker Visa? Like we know that Job Seeker Visa is only for six months. So, what will be the chancellor's card duration? Uh, you mean the chancellor green card to me that they have started? No, no. no Jochen had posted regarding this new uh, career opportunity card in which we have to fulfill like three of, out of four requirements, right? I am uh, not able yeah, yeah. to pronounce it in German, but yeah, but some kind of a card in yeah. which we have to be under 35 years old. You yeah, yeah. so that's like a green card where you have them. the point system. So for each eligibility, you get yeah, the points. Yeah, correct, correct, point yeah. system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yeah. So yeah. Does, does that have some validity or uh, like, is it like for lifetime? How does that work? Because as far that as was I not know, mentioned in the website. Yeah, as far as I know, this is not yet implemented. This is still in talks, right? So this is not okay, yet Okay, okay, okay. 
so once we have this live probably we have the clear understanding of how this is working but yeah oh, okay, okay, okay. i think probably you can also do some research i will also try to do some research on this uh, i think yeah, it's yeah. a good opportunity yes. for those who wants to who were planning for job seeker visa but now they have another option probably yes 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 yeah because if if, if the if, even if the duration is more than job seeker visa it is still a much more bigger advantage than job seeker visa also and it, i think it is much more less risky or also mm. once you get this i i think so but let's see yeah Thank yeah you. definitely okay guys then uh, wish you all a happy diwali and uh, take care keep trying thank you happy so diwali. much for your time you. Thank you. happy diwali Thank you. you too bye thank you bye